What's up, YouTube? This is 82 and 0. Welcome back. So, today I wanted to talk about Will Chamberlain's first championship. Uh, rather than talking about the team, I'm going to talk more about what it meant to uh, Wilt as an individual. So, I was watching um, the limited footage that they have. 1967 conference finals between the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, they got it on League Pass. It's game four. But it got it got me thinking. So what did Will Chamberlain's first championship mean to him? And I don't mean as the team, I'm sure every player had their own opinion what it meant to them. But here's my take on this. You know, Wilt Chamberlain, he's a Philadelphia native. He played for the Harlem Globetrotters before being a territorial pick. And he goes to the Philadelphia Warriors in 1959-60. Because prior to Wilt Chamberlain, as I'm sure everybody watching this knows, Bill Russell was he was the superstar in the league. He was winning titles. He won in 57, won in 59, probably would have won in 58 had he not been injured. So here comes this other Goliath, seven foot one, two hundred seventy pound giant, and they approach the game differently. Russell says, "I'm just going to focus on defense." Didn't mean he couldn't score, but he was primarily focusing on the defensive end. He was a great rebounder, great shot blocker, good passing center. And then Wilt Chamberlain, although he was an elite defender himself, he focused a lot on the offensive side, especially in his early years on the Philadelphia Warriors. I mean, 62 season, for example, he averaged 50 points per game. But Wilt was never really able to transfer that, su that success that he had in regular seasons into the playoffs. And, you know, there's factors for this. There wasn't a free agency back then. It's not like Wilt could just have people sign with his team. And it's funny, everybody cast Wilt as the loser. Uh, he still won two championships. There's a lot of guys in that era who went ringless because of Bill Russell. Never won a chip. So, you know, Wilt would play... On the Philadelphia Warriors from 59-60 season. In 1963-64, though, they would relocate to San Francisco. And Will liked this move. He liked partying on the West Coast. You know, the West Coast was a little more open to his lifestyle. Uh, the women he liked to date. You know, he wasn't able to do that in Philadelphia at the time. So it gave him more freedom. But also, it meant he was in the Western Conference. This time, he's got to be matched up against, you know, Bill Russell and the Celtics in 1964. And there actually is footage of the 1964 Finals. I found some on YouTube. Um, I wish I could find it in English. For whatever reason, I mean, no disrespect to anyone, the game is all in Spanish. It's fine, but... I wish I could find someone in English. But anyways, they have Game 4 on YouTube. Uh, but anyways, it'd be a matchup between Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell. And by this time, I mean, Russell and him, they already matched up in 60 and 62 when Wilt was in the Eastern Conference. But now it's different. They're in the Finals. And unfortunately, his team would lose in five games, despite him putting up 29 and 27. And that goes to say, like, Wilt, he didn't always have the best postseason numbers. And I think sometimes when people look at the career average of his playoff numbers, they think, oh, well, he just choked. Uh, he, he really did step up against Boston. I mean, look at the 62 Eastern Division Finals. Game 7, right? Uh, it went to a 7 game is what I'm trying to say. He averaged 36 points, 26 rebounds. And these, these were close games. These weren't... 
it wasn't Wilt getting blown out. I mean, Game 7 of the 1962 Eastern Division Finals, the Warriors just lost by two points. And I'm sure that eight Wilt's alive. I mean, he probably thought if I would have just had two points, if I would have just had three points, four points, whatever. So, Wilt gets traded. After, you know, San Francisco was going through some financial difficulties during this time. They want they want to trade him to a place where they can get compensation. So they traded him to the Philadelphia 76ers. Because at this time, the Syracuse Nationals moved to Philadelphia. And, you know, rebranded themselves as the Philadelphia 76ers. So they traded him for cash. And San Francisco looked at it as... Well, we got Nate Thurman. He can step up. Uh, at the time, from what I read, Wilt was getting into it with the owner, which I'm not going to get into in this video. It's a topic for another day. But anyways, he goes to the 76ers. Again, he's on his hometown. And I really do see this. I mean, I wasn't in his head or anything. But I see this as kind of being similar to what LeBron went through. And he goes back to Cleveland because, you know, LeBron goes back to Cleveland. They win that championship. And LeBron's pretty much a Cleveland native. He's from Akron, which is right outside of Cleveland. But I don't think it gets talked about enough how uh, Wilt Chamberlain dethroned Bill Russell and the Celtics, ended their dynasty. You had the Celtics who won eight championships in a row at this point. Uh, they won it. They won in '57, lost in '58, from '59 into '66. They were the consistent championship. Uh, East 1965 Eastern Division Finals, because Wilt was actually traded near the deadline. So the 76ers that year in 1965, they didn't have the best record because they didn't have Wilt there the whole year. But, you know, they're matched up against the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Division Finals. Goes to seven games. Wilt puts up good numbers. But, unfortunately, at the end of the game, there's a bad pass. Uh, and it gets picked off by John Havlicek. The uh, 76ers had the chance to win it in 65. All they had to do, because Bill Russell turned the ball over. And the 76ers had the ball. There was enough time to get a shot off. They threw the inbound pass, and John Havlicek stole it. And he brilliantly threw it off, I think it was to Sam Jones, to run the timeout. And they won by two points. Or, if, yeah. So, you know, it's a, hard, it's a heartbreaking defeat. Uh, 1966, they lose to him again. Uh... But by the time 67 rolls around, you know, Wilt had a really good coach in Alex Hanum. Hanum had success with the Hawks in defeating Bill Russell. So I think he, in the back of his mind, had a game plan how, how to defeat Boston. And he kind of just told uh, Wilt Chamberlain, you know, relax. Don't take so many shots. You know, pass the ball a little more. Focus more on defense. and. Will Chamberlain won the MVP in 67. They were the, had the best regular season record. Up, they made the record, actually, up to that point. It would eventually get broken by the 72 Lakers, then the 96 Bulls, then the 2016 Warriors. But you get the point. And 1967, they defeat Boston in the Eastern Division Finals. And I don't mean just defeated them narrowly. I mean... They made a statement. They defeated Boston in five games. Wilt Chamberlain, at the age of 30, gets his first championship. He's got an MVP. He's got a championship. So, back to the title of this video. What did that mean for Wilt Chamberlain? Because all through the early 60s, he's branded as a loser. He's branded as a selfish player. He can't win. He can't adjust his game. Well, he proves them wrong. He adjusts his game. He passes more. He led the league in assists. 
Um, he gets his teammates involved. And actually, in that Eastern Divisionals final series, he averaged a triple double 21 points, 32 rebounds, and 10 assists. So, Wilt totally changed his game plan. And it worked. They won the championship. And that's more than a lot of players in that era got. Elgin Baylor never got a ring. Wes would get one eventually, but not during the 60s. Uh, there's a lot of good players that went ringless because of Russell. So to say Chamberlain is a loser, I, I don't think it's all the way true. He eventually dethroned them. And it, to me, I see it as two players, two, two equivalents. Like I said, you got LeBron and Cleveland, that feeling. Uh, or another instance would be Shaq in 2000. Because a lot of people don't know this, late 90s, Shaq was branded as a loser himself. You know, oh, he can't win a series. He's dominant, but they're going to get swept. They're going to get beat. You know, he's getting beat by the Jazz. He's getting beat by the Spurs. Getting beat by the Bulls, the Rockets. And then he wins his championship and his MVP in 2000. And that's what Will did. And it's on, it's his home, it's for his hometown. I'm sure that meant a lot to him. So let me know what your thoughts are down below. What's your opinion on Wilt Chamberlain? Where do you rank him all the time? And do you think it's right to vilify him as the loser? Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And thanks for watching.